Welcome to Lesson 6E, Vorticity, Two-Dimensional Airfoil. In this lesson, we'll apply the concepts we learned in the previous lesson about vorticity production at a wall to a two-dimensional airfoil. First, a quick review. We're going to consider only 2D, steady, incompressible Newtonian flow, and we'll limit our discussion to the two-dimensional x1, x2 plane. When we have a wall, the wall will be stationary, and we'll ignore gravity. Here's the simplified Navier-Stokes equation that we derived in the previous lesson, which applies at a wall. Recall our question that we're trying to answer. How is vorticity produced at a wall? The answer we gave last time was that vorticity is produced only at a wall, and only when there's a pressure gradient along the wall. Here's a physical interpretation of this answer. When del P del X1 is positive, in other words, the fluid directly above the wall is slowing down or decelerating. Then because of the negative sign in this equation, the slope of vorticity is negative at the wall. This leads to a production of positive vorticity at the wall. In the opposite case, when del P del X1 is negative, the fluid is accelerating, the slope is positive, and we have a production of negative vorticity at the wall. When there's no slope, the flow is neither accelerating nor decelerating. There's no slope of vorticity when there's no pressure gradient, and thus no vorticity is produced at the wall. We'll discuss two examples of this. The 2D airfoil case will be discussed in this lesson, and the flat plate boundary layer will be discussed in the next lesson. Let's consider a 2D airfoil, specifically the leading edge of the airfoil. Here are some streamlines around the upper portion of the leading edge of this airfoil. Recall that in boundary layer coordinates, x1, or x, is always parallel to the wall, and x2, or y, is always normal to the wall. In this region, the flow is accelerating, and therefore del p del x1 is negative. The pressure is decreasing as the speed above the airfoil is increasing. This is easy to remember if you think about the Bernoulli effect. As speed goes up, pressure goes down. By the way, this is called a favorable pressure gradient. The word favorable indicating that this is good for the boundary layer. It's not likely to separate. According to equation 4 from above, which I write out here, del omega 3 del x2 is positive when del p del x1 is negative. This leads to a flux of negative vorticity from the wall to the fluid. In other words, negative vorticity is being produced at the wall in this region of accelerating flow. The signs can get a little confusing here, but think about the physics. Negative vorticity is mathematically clockwise. So as negative vorticity is being produced, it leads to a clockwise rotation of the fluid particles, and the fluid particles are accelerating in the flow direction. By the way, in the x1, x2 coordinate system, or the boundary layer coordinate system along the wall, omega-3 is positive or counterclockwise coming out of the page in the z direction, or the x3 direction. That's why this vorticity is negative. Here's a silly little way that I remember this. Suppose we have a fluid particle right at the wall. When the flow is accelerating, the pressure on the left side of the particle is larger than the pressure on the right side, since del P del X1 is negative, which is trying to push the fluid to the right to accelerate it. But I like to think of this fluid particle being stuck to the wall. My silly little analogy is to pretend that the fluid particle is a person whose feet are stuck to the wall because of the no-slip condition, but because of the pressure gradient, the pressure on his left side is higher than the pressure on his right side. But since his feet are stuck to the ground, the pressure tends to make him tilt towards the low pressure. In other words, the person will rotate clockwise, which is a negative vorticity. I'll demonstrate that for you. Duck, turn to your side. <laughs> Thanks, Duck and Dick, for that illustration. You're welcome. In an adverse pressure gradient, del P del X1 is positive. In other words, pressure is increasing downstream in the X1 direction. Thus, we have the opposite effect. 
where our little person stuck to the wall has a low pressure on the left and a higher pressure on the right, and the flow is decelerating opposite to this case. Again, since his feet are stuck to the wall, the pressure gradient tends to push him backwards, so he turns counterclockwise, which in my analogy is a positive vorticity. Now let's look at the whole 2D airfoil. I'll sketch a case where there's a small angle of attack, so the streamlines look something like this around the airfoil. Here's the stagnation point. The flow accelerates here, which is a production of negative vorticity, and the flow decelerates here, which is a production of positive vorticity. Again, our signs are such that negative vorticity is clockwise and positive vorticity is counterclockwise. This is a region of favorable pressure gradient and this is a region of adverse pressure gradient. A similar thing happens on the bottom of the airfoil, but the signs are all kind of backwards since the boundary layer is upside down. We end up with the production of positive vorticity here and a production of negative vorticity here. In these little sections of flow, there's no vorticity production, since there's no pressure gradient. Here's where it gets interesting. For steady state conditions, the net production of vorticity from the whole surface of the airfoil is zero. In fact, in the wake region, the net vorticity across the wake is also zero. The positive vorticity and the negative vorticity cancel each other out across the wake. All the vorticity generated at these surfaces are swept into the wake and eventually cancel each other out. To further confuse us, we can calculate the net circulation around this airfoil. Gamma is the line integral over some closed area C of u dot ds, and you might expect this to be zero because of this statement, but it turns out that gamma is negative, which means there's a net clockwise circulation around the airfoil. Aerodynamicists call this a bound vortex. Recall Stokes' theorem, which says we can write the circulation as an area integral of omega dot dA, where the area is inside this contour. But this also must be less than zero because of this bound vortex. But how can this be if the net production of vorticity from the whole surface of the airfoil is zero? How did we get this bound vortex? If any of you are aerospace or aeronautical engineering students, you'll remember discussing something called the starting vortex. Way back at the airport, when the airplane increased its angle of attack to take off, the bound vortex was established, namely negative circulation, and a starting vortex of opposite sign, positive circulation, remains at the airport. The bound vortex around the airfoil and the starting vortex at the airport have the same magnitude of circulation but opposite signs. If we take a big contour around the whole thing, there's no net circulation. We conclude that net vorticity is established around the airfoil during takeoff. Once we've reached steady state around the airfoil, however, the airfoil surface no longer produces any net vorticity. This bound vortex, by the way, is what leads to lift on the airfoil, which we'll talk about in more detail in a later lesson. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.